well, the traditional models would teach you to just build a bigger and bigger and bigger database. In other words, you want needles? Okay, cool. Just add more hay, a bigger pipeline, they say. Bigger pipeline, bigger pipeline, bigger pipeline. And from that, you'll find a number of referrals. I would argue that that strategy is the same reason why you're not at the dinner table. Although you might be putting food at the, at the dinner table, you're not there or you're not there as often as you'd like, or you're not there present, right? You're looking at your phone the whole time, trying to answer text because you're, you're doing so much sorting through bales of hay that you're not actually present with the people who you love the most. Because the management and transparency is what's very important. So once you submit a referral, you're going to have your own home advantage account and it's going to tell you where everything sits. So if you have 10 referrals that you've sent into the network, it's going to give you all 10 referrals. It's going to tell you every milestone that that client is sitting in, whether they're touring homes, whether they're an escrow. And you now can manage through the home advantage application as far as what your pipeline looks like for the referrals that you've sent. And so it's pretty sophisticated uh, and it's, it's all click of a button, guys. Hey guys, welcome, welcome. Uh, glad to have you here. Come on in. Um, we're going to be learning about professional networking, how you can uh, not only have a great uh, business that comes from your sphere, but more importantly, how you leverage that to get even more, get even more referrals. Um, so excited to be with you all. Um, thank you. Thank you for, for being here. For those that are just coming in, come on in, have a seat. And uh, we are now live streaming. Hello, Lab Code Agents. What's up, everybody? Justin Stoddard here. Uh, really excited to be with you. Uh, really excited to be with you today. We're going to be talking about, again, how to get referrals from a professional network, right? How does it, What does it look like to actually get referrals from a professional network? So, so excited you're all here. Welcome, welcome. Um, I'm going to put in the chat um, right now, I would invite everybody, let me know where you're from. And I'm also going to put in my Instagram link. So I'd love to connect with you there. Um, actually have at the very end, a uh, North Colorado. Awesome. Welcome, Daniel. I have actually a um, ability for you to uh, connect with me and get the slides to this at the end. I know it's always hard when you're trying to take notes. Maybe you're busy doing other things. So this will give you the ability uh, to get this. You can just message me on Instagram. So connect with me there. Um, and or at the end, I'll give you a QR code. So a couple, a couple of different ways to get this information because we're going to go through a lot pretty quickly. Um, so again, today's goal is to teach you how to get referrals from other professionals, really professional networking. So for maybe for those of you that have been a part of maybe a previous career, right? Most people have. Most people don't start real estate as their first career. It's usually kind of a second phase of their career. Many of you come out of corporate America. Many of you have come from the corporate world and you have strong professional networks and you've always wondered, how do I leverage that for my real estate business? Today, I'm going to help you kind of see that and connect the dots on that. So again, if you're just joining us, please let us know where you're from. We'd love to uh, connect with you. And um, I'm going to go ahead and dive right in. So again, welcome, welcome. Again, my name is Justin Stoddart. Happy to be here with you. And I actually authored a book called The Upstream Model. Um, we are going to get into that here a little bit more here shortly. Uh, but for now, let me just get started. So I know that all of us are experiencing this. In fact, I just had an agent that I coach. She said, Justin, I was about ready to uh, write a million dollar offer. And the client said, you know what, with these banks collapsing. I think I'm just going to wait. I just want to hold on to my money. It's a little bit concerning for me to be making moves right now. I, I just, I just want to kind of be safe. So maybe you're experiencing that. If you are, if you've experienced that in the past little bit where you've had people say, you know what, we're going to wait and see what happens with this market. Um, please let me know. Just put a number one in the chat. If that is a common phrase that you've heard saying, we're going to wait and see what happens with the market. Um, if that's you again, let me know. Cause I think there's a lot of agents that can relate to that. So why is that happening? Well, I think we'd all agree that sellers are attached to last year's equity and buyers are attached to last year's interest rates, right? People, they're just not speaking the same language right now. And uh, so how do we, and, and, and maybe how, how do we fix that, right? Because we can sit around and kind of wait for things to get better, but I don't think that's going to be good on your income. I don't think it's going to be good on your business, on your, on your state of mind. Sitting and waiting for the market to get better is not a good idea. And so really right now we have a choice, right? We have a choice to ask this question, which is option one, which is, I hope the market gets better so that I can have a good year. Or option two, which is, what do I need to learn? Who do I need to become so that I can have a great year, 
Okay, that's a way better question than when you ask that question, everything changes. Everything changes. So all of a sudden, you no longer have given all the power to the market to say, boy, I hope you're good to me, real estate gods. I sure hope you're good to me, right? That's a bad spot to be in. Okay, what you want to say is, I'm going to have a great year. I'm going to take control of my situation and I'm going to learn new things. I'm going to build new networks and I'm going to become the person that thrives in this market. If you can get your head around that, I'll tell you what, you're going to be at the top 1% of the top 1% because not everybody thinks that way. But those that do and follow through on it create a very different situation. And that's really what this comes down to is it's either survival or it's thrive mode. And I, I want to teach you how to thrive today. I would, I, would, I would offer up this, that those that thrive are going to find out how to get in front of highly motivated buyers and sellers. Like that is the secret is that while many people are saying, we're going to wait and see what happens, there's a whole other group that are saying, I'd love to wait and see what happens. I'd love to, but I just don't have that luxury. I have to buy, I have to sell, okay? So the, the, the emphasis of our conversation today comes down to how do we find those people? How do we find the people that are highly motivated to buy or sell and that are not able to say, ah, I'm going to wait and see what happens. I'm going to tap the brakes over here right? Which when we're building a business, that doesn't work for us, right? When we're growing our business, it doesn't work for us. We have to find the people that have to make a move, okay? That's an exciting place to be. Now, keep in mind, as I mentioned before, there's going to be a QR code at the end that will give me some feedback as well as it will give me the ability to send you the slides from today's presentation because we are going to get into some detail work here. For those that don't know me, I am a family man. This is my crew. This is our pictures uh, this fall. And uh, you can tell that our our cute little uh, girl up on the back of the couch there, she kind of, she tries to rule the roost. And her, her older siblings push back, but she's, she's got a, a big personality, as you can tell. Here's what I want you to know about this picture, is that it's just like you. Um, I have people in my life that I care about and that depend upon me, right? And just like you, not only do I want to deliver to them value, not only do I want to put food on the table, but I actually want to be at the table when they're there, right? Now, maybe there's, there's a parent, a sibling, um, a, a spouse, a significant other, a child that you're caring for, even a cause. It could be a cause that you're donating to. And you want to be able to give them the resources that they need. But then you probably also want to say, and I also want to give them my time, right? It's not good enough just to like deliver the check. I actually want to, I miss out when I don't, when I'm not there at the dinner table when the dinner is served. If that's how you feel and you want both success in your business and significance in your life, then this topic is going to be very meaningful to you. Keep in mind that, that um, I've interviewed the most successful people in the world in our industry. Um, Tristan uh, Almada is uh, actually somebody who, who has been on the show. His, his um, episode is going to release here this next week. It's going to be a great one about how to build a great community. Um, but uh, I, my podcast actually was just upgraded to be top 1% uh, globally top 10 in real estate. And uh, so I don't say that to, to, to make you think I'm cool. I just want you to know that the people who I've interviewed, people like Grant Cardone and others have poured into me. And so the value that I can bring to you in today's episode is going to be significant. I've also authored a book called The Upstream Model. It's an international bestseller. And many of the principles that I share with you today are, are going to come from that book. Um, I also am the uh, CEO of a company called Think Bigger Real Estate, in which, in which we help uh, real estate agents to scale their warm market business. You and I both know there's, there's all kinds of um, lead generation sources out there. But what I do want you to know is that, is that if you want to grow a warm market business, there are some foundational principles that you should rely upon. Okay. Um, so know this, that there are seasons of life. Okay. Just like leaves on a tree, there are seasons of growth and there are seasons of of death, right? And uh, just like there are seasons of, of life for leaves, there's also seasons of life for people, right? You might say everything from divorce is a season of many people's lives, right? Now, divorce is significantly higher than it's been in previous years. And by the way, this happens every time there's economic turmoil. Every time there's, there's economic distress, divorce rates go up. So, I think we could probably read between the lines that there's an opportunity there for the next little while. Diamonds, uh, anytime households form together, this also creates new housing situations, right? These are all precursors to a real estate move, right? When there's death, right? Whether it's just now that mom is living in the house, it's too big for her, 
right? She can't stay in the house or whether the, the actual owners of the home passed away. Okay, diapers, new baby in the house. We need a new neighborhood. We need a bigger yard. We need this, we need that, right? Um, those things are, uh, are, are oftentimes requiring people to make a move. Devastation. Okay, now devastation, again, is one in which, um, whether it's because somebody lost a job, whether it's because there was a natural disaster, devastation causes people to have to move, people to be highly motivated. Okay, diplomas, when people are being, uh, again, uh, whether it be promoted or they're graduating college, like oftentimes people will make a decision about moving to a new area uh, when, and, and, and moving new houses, new zip codes when there are changes in their employment. Uh, people downsizing, right? Whether they're just going into a senior care facility or whether they're just simplifying life and ready to enjoy their golden years, uh, people are downsizing, right? Destination, right? People are moving to sunnier locations. They're moving to places where their, you know, where their um, employment has has moved. Um, anytime you have changes uh, in destination, of course, there's there's opportunities to for people to buy and sell real estate. Okay, but now you might be asking yourself the question of like, how do I find these people? Because there's some, there are some wrong ways and some right ways to find them. Some wrong ways might include you sending out an email to your sphere saying, hey, are you um, thinking about a divorce here in the next little bit? I wouldn't do that, right? Um, or how healthy are you feeling? Are you feeling like uh, this, you, you might be in your last leg of life? No, don't do that, right? These are some really bad ideas on how to market to find these people. So with all of these, the, the, the tricky part is that there's oftentimes a bit of a reluctance, right? There's very much a, a because it's a bit sensitive. These are, sen anytime there's a life transition, oftentimes people are going through kind of a shift in, in, in their new reality and it could be sensitive. So you have to be careful about how you find these people. So how do we find them, right? Because it can feel a little bit like a needle in a haystack, right? It can feel like you're having a hard time finding these people when most people are not coming out and sharing with the world that they're going through a divorce or that they're not feeling well or that right or that they just lost their job they're going through bankruptcy like this is not stuff that you publicly put on your news feed in most cases so how do you find these people then how do you locate them okay well the traditional models would teach you to just build a bigger and bigger and bigger database in other words you want needles Okay, cool. Just add more hay, a bigger pipeline, they say. Bigger pipeline, bigger pipeline, bigger pipeline. And from that, you'll find a number of referrals. I would argue that that strategy is the same reason why you're not at the dinner table. Although you might be putting food at the, at the dinner table, you're not there, or you're not there as often as you'd like, or you're not there present, right? You're looking at your phone the whole time, trying to answer texts because you're, you're doing so much sorting through bales of hay that you're not actually present with the people who you love the most. Okay. So again, that would be compared to bigger, bigger, bigger database. When you go to somebody to say, okay, I'm looking for highly motivated buyers and sellers using our metaphor, that would be needles. I'm looking for needles in the haystack. Great. Just look for, look through more hay and you'll find more needles, which my argument is maybe that's not the answer. Maybe more hay is not the answer. Maybe looking for stacks of needles is the right answer. Right, maybe that is the right answer. Is for you to go looking for stacks of needles. Go look. Where are the needles hanging out? Where are the pin cushions? Where you already have highly motivated buyers and sellers. And today I'm going to walk you through exactly what that looks like. These principles I learned as a high-end luxury home builder. I was building custom homes, and I left my previous employer to st to start out on my own. I had his blessing as he was focused on land development, and so this was me down here in the right-hand corner. I was trying to get my line in the water. I was trying to compete with other you know, with, with other home builders. And at the time it was very crowded. However, uh, I may have noticed now, now for those of you that are in real estate, you may feel that this is kind of like your situation right now is that there's way more real estate agents than there are homes to sell. I mean, to put that into context, there's 1.6 million real estate agents right now. And that projected 4.5 million transactions. That's what, like, not quite three transactions per agent. That does not work. You and I both know that that does not work. Gross revenue of call it $30,000 per agent. That's, that's, that's a terrible income, a terrible living. So in other words, there are gonna be a lot of agents who go without. Don't let yourself be one of them. Get your unfair share. Okay, now as a builder, what that meant for me, right, was that instead of hanging out down here where everybody else was hanging out, I noticed if you look upstream, hence my, my book, The Upstream Model, if you look upstream, you'll see that there's an architect. And this architect has 
all the clients that I want, right? Now, again, as a home builder, I realized I needed to get in relationship with him because he could open the door to these clients long before these other builders even knew about that opportunity. So I moved upstream and this became where I, where I began to hang out is adding significant value to this particular upstream partner. Because I realized that if I could, if I could add value, not just friendship value, but actual real value when it comes to building their business, helping improve their client experience, that I would have an early introduction and an early head start on all the clients that I ultimately wanted, which was exactly where I wanted to be. So in other words, the traditional models teaches bigger and bigger haystacks, right? Compete more and more with people downstream, right? Kind of the two metaphors I've shared. And from that, you'll get a small number of referrals, which in this market, you'll get even a smaller number of referrals because like we said, many people are on the sideline. And instead, the alternative would be to create a small database of upstream partners. And from that small database, for me as a home builder, again, it was an architect, but imagine having a whole group of architects that could help me to create a large number of referrals. Now, how does, the, how does this particular example apply to you as a real estate agent? Well, let me explain. Those eight Ds that I shared before, divorce, right? Attorneys, mediators, diamonds, the wedding industry, death, estate attorneys, right? Uh, diapers, the medical industry, birthing classes, et cetera, right? Devastation, trustees or insurance companies, diplomas, HR departments, downsizing, senior care, destination, financial advisors. All of these professions end up being what I call upstream partners. They're people who, when you, when you learn how to properly professionally network, you can network into these people and you can create a very unique relationship that allows you to have access to a lot of clients early a lot of clients before, before those clients ever actually go into the competitive marketplace with all your competitors. So the five steps of the upstream model, right? Because you might be asking yourself, okay, I love the model. How do I do it? How do I actually go as a builder, approach an architect? Or for you as a real estate agent, how do I go actually get value from a financial advisor or from a divorce attorney, right? Like, how do I, how do, I do that? Well, the very first step is to identify who is the people, who do you actually want to be working with? Maybe you don't want to work with divorcees. Maybe you don't want to work with seniors. Maybe you don't want to work with first-time home buyers or people that are just relo like relocating to a new area. Maybe that's not your people, or maybe it is. But you need to ask yourself the question, look back at your life resume to say, who am I uniquely positioned in order to serve and help right now? Based on who I've, who I've served in the past, based on my previous life experience, based on who I love to serve, who am I uniquely positioned to take care of, okay? And to serve at a high level, okay? And once you've identified that, then you simply identify who is the partner, who is the upstream partner. In other words, the other professional who already has a relationship with that person, okay? By, by understanding that, now all of a sudden, you're, you're in business, right? Or at least you're on your way. And specifically, the next step is to seek a warm introduction to that person. In other words, don't just like try and solicit into that person. That will go well. That'll put you at the back of the line. What you want to do instead is put yourself to the front of the line by getting a warm introduction that sounds very different from every other agent they've ever met, right? So for example, Ben, Kin ben Kinney taught me this, which is to position yourself as being a wealth advisor for their real estate portfolio, okay? So if you could position yourself to be a wealth advisor for their real estate portfolio, now you're in a really interesting spot to where you're, you sound different and they, there's curiosity around wanting to meet with you. Now, the next step is to meet with them as a peer. Rather than showing up and giving your dog and pony show of, here's all my cards, can I put them on your desk? Here's a cute little pop by that I wanted to give to you. Those things aren't wrong, they're not bad. But in a B2B setting, I would argue that a better approach would be to show up as a business consultant. Don't go there to talk about yourself, go there to ask questions about them. You want to know where they're at their business now, where they want to be at, what's their path to get there and what obstacles are they going to uncover or are they going to encounter that you can help them to solve? When you do that, you can walk out of that meeting and deliver a favor, add value to their client experience that causes them to be very endeared to you, right? Causes them to want to, to, to continue to stay in relationship with you, okay? What that does is it opens the door. You've essentially, essentially auditioned for the part to now integrate into their client experience rather than just being on the outside, right? Rather than just being another real estate agent, 
you've now taken the value, unique market data, right? Unique insights that you have about real estate. And you've integrated that into their client experience to where they're now interested in talking to their clients about the information you've provided, which puts you in the meeting without having to be in the meeting. You're at home, right? With your family when dinner is served, right? You not only put food on the table, but you put yourself a butt in the seat to be there to enjoy the people, the relationships that will bring you great joy and satisfaction, right? You've done that while somebody else sorts through the bales of hay on your behalf, right? And they do that gladly because it's adding value to their client experience. And in the moment that those people say that they, they want to make a move in real estate, you are top of mind and tip of tongue for that particular, that particular professional partner, right? That strategic referral partner. Now, keep in mind that what we've done is we've created playbooks. I've gone through, I've, I've interviewed divorce attorneys. Um, I've, I've interviewed estate attorneys. I've interviewed property managers, financial advisors, lenders, and, and the list goes on and on. We've created kind of the, the, the very best upstream partners out there. We've created a scenario to where we know exactly what their needs are, to where you can step right into those conversations and be able to, to become valuable to them right away without having to do guesswork. So that's something that, that, that we've uncovered. And again, if you want to engage with me um, in through social media, again, find me on Instagram, um, in the chat, I've put my, my contact info, find me on Facebook. If you have questions about particular professions, let me know I'm happy. I'm an open book and happy to answer questions for you. I want you to have success with this model. On behalf of my relationship with Lab Code Agents, which again, I believe is the best real estate agent network out there. I give this value to those that tune into this. I give the, this value to those, those who, who are act, active part of this community to add value to this community. So please, if you have questions, please reach out. Um, again, here are the five steps of the upstream model altogether. Feel free to screenshot that. And then again, you can, you can reach out to me on social media. I'm happy to answer questions that you have about that. So this will, will help you. Um, again, if you're wondering, like, does this really work? Yeah, it totally does, right? In fact, third testimonial down, um, this is just recent. He said, uh, Justin, I'll make more money by March 15th, which by the way, was a couple of days ago than I did in all of 2022. Cause now I'm just having the right conversations with the right people. Now, some of that was just his, his pipeline had matured, right? And it got to that point. He, he's been in the business for a number of years and 2022 was a tough year, but he started having more conversations with the right people who could open, open up more doors. Um, and it, it, it's turning out awesome. So this strategy can be worked with everything from divorce attorneys, like my client, Jen, to a number of, of different uh, upstream partners like my client Kendall or my client Arthur who, who got actually uh, two listings from an HVAC contractor. So it doesn't just have to be, doesn't just have to be professional partners like CPAs and financial advisors. It can absolutely be handymen, carpet cleaners, right? But the strategy on getting to the point to where they want to bring you up to their clients, not because they feel like they owe you one, is a very different model, right? And that's where I know I can help you. Again, if this has been helpful, um, I'd really encourage you to do me a favor um, and um, download the slides. Um, you can reach out to me if you if you if you screenshot this or take a quick picture of this with your phone. Um, it'll allow me uh, to send you an email with with a link to the slides. It'll also allow me to um, answer any questions that you have after this. So on social media or here is one way to do it. Again, guys, I'm I'm very appreciative of of this. Uh, this community and what it does for the real estate um, industry. Uh, also very, very happy to participate and add value to those that are here engaging. I believe that the value that you will get here will set you apart and cause you to get your unfair share. And uh, so I share these things with you out of contribution um, to, to you and, and your desire, right? To not just build a great business, but build a great warm market business that even extends beyond your personal sphere to your professional network that's where my expertise is at. That's where I can really add value to you and to this community. So again, appreciate the opportunity, guys. Thanks so much for being here. If you have questions, reach out to me again. Justin Stoddard is my name. Happy to uh, connect with you on social media um, or via this survey. We can also uh, connect that way. So thanks for being here, everybody. Talk soon. Appreciate you all. Bye-bye.